Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Steph. I'm Vicky, And this is Tosh. Tosh is my Greyhound and she loves toys, but I needed a place to store them all. Now we've made storage before for dog toys, but this time I wanted a way for her to be able to pick out a toy and it be different every single time. And we also wanted to put it in the corner so it'd be out of the way for the humans. And this is what we did. For this project, we just looked through our scrap wood and found a couple of pieces of 3 4 inch plywood that would work. We started by ripping our scrap wood into manageable pieces. We used our Makita track saw for the majority of the cuts. The most difficult part of this build is the angle of the front edge. The front two edges need to be 45 degrees. Right here, I'm setting that angle on our track saw. Here I'm making our first bevel cut. We also use our table saw to make some of the final cuts. And here we are making a 45 degree angle on the table saw. There's a lot of different saws that you can use for these type of cuts, so use what you have and most saws have the option to cut at different angles. Next we glued the two side pieces together and brad nailed them to secure. To get the right angle for the bottom of the unit, I place the sides on the board and trace the angle. To make these cuts, I clamped a straight edge and use our circular saw to make the cuts. I lined up the guide and made the second cut. Perfect fit. To make the front of the unit, we laid the unit down and drew a line where it needed to be cut. Again, we set up a straight edge and use our circular saw. The front of the unit is going to have a few decorative holes which will allow for airflow into the box as dog stuffed animals can sometimes get a little funky. To make these holes, we're going to be using three different size hole saws. Mom randomly placed them and drew patterns so I knew where to make the cuts. And then I cut all the holes. You might notice we're using two brands of hole saws. These are our two favorites, Diablo and Milwaukee. They're worth the extra money and make perfect holes. Mom sanded and wood filled the holes and I used a router to soften the edges of the front as I don't want the dogs to get hurt when pulling out toys. On the bottom we routed the edge of the front and back of the unit, again to make it soft for the dogs. I'm using a 5 16 inch radius roundover bit by Diablo on our Makito palm router. I wanted a very minimal roundover so I adjusted the router base up so it just had a slight curve without a decorative edge. This is an example of what it would have looked like if I used the full bit, and this is what I actually went with. Off camera, mom painted the inside of the unit gray to match the armoire that will be next to it. With that dry, we glued and brad nailed the bottom of the unit in place. Next, we attached the front. You'll notice there's a small space at the bottom. This is where the dogs will pull out the toys. Mom first glued the edges, then we placed the front on and lifted up the unit so we had a solid surface to brad nail into. The first nail popped out from the bottom because of the angle, so I realized I just needed to angle the brad nailer, and then the nails went in perfect. For the top of the unit, again, we placed a piece of wood on top and traced the shape. I cut these in the same manner. Because we rounded over the front edges, the sides of the unit stuck out just a tiny bit, so mom used an angle grinder to sand them down with a sanding disc. Then she finished that up with 220 grit sandpaper. She added a little wood fill and painted the entire unit gray. Before adding the top, we wanted to bring it into the house to check it out in the space. This is the current dog storage unit that only has a few dog toys in it because I was washing all the rest. I had to spend some time moving the armoire over a little bit to get the unit to fit perfectly in the space. Once it was in place, we tested out different ideas on how to hinge the top. Ultimately settling on one side using a continuous hinge. Mom marked the holes and I drilled pilot holes then screwed it into place.
Then we tested it out and decided exactly where the unit needed to be placed, and for safety we secured it with a couple of screws to the armoire next to it. We used these two washers as spacers as we needed a little distance between the two units. Nice and secure. Time to load it up. I was so excited to find out that this held all of Tasha's dog toys. As she pulls them out from the bottom, I can pick them up and put them back in the top and she constantly has a new toy available to her. In an unexpected surprise, the holes actually are a perfect place for some of her smaller toys and she can actually just grab these toys right out of the holes. Now I will say Tosh loves this and has been playing with her toys in this unit, but it is hard to capture that on camera, so this is the best that I got, but just know she does love it. And when her Greyhound friends come over, I know they're going to love it too. What we learned! Well, as you saw, we made ours to fit into a corner, but that really can be made into any size or shape that you need for your needs. I do like that it's tall so you don't have to bend over to put those toys in, so that makes it really, really easy. The holes in the front were actually to allow airflow for the toys inside because sometimes they can get a little dog slobbery. But in the end, it's smelly too. Yeah, but at the end, we realized it was kind of really cool to put their toy, her toys in here because uh, she could actually like pull them out from the holes. So if we were to do this again, we would probably add a couple more holes. Speaking of those holes, once you make those holes, you'll have to sand them. And I ended up hand sanding them because at the time I didn't know we actually had the proper tools. <laughs> You can see in this picture, this is a set of Rockler drum sanders that actually go onto a drill and it would have made it so easy to sand up these holes. When I designed this, I originally designed a bungee at the bottom because I thought I would need that to hold the toys in. But in actuality, after we put it together, I don't think I need anything at the bottom to hold the toys in. If they do fall out, I can just kind of push them back in or, you know, makes it easy for Tosh to play with them. So uh, if you do, if you design this, you know, keep that till the end and see if that's something that is really necessary. All right, well, thanks for joining us. If you want to see more projects from us, be sure to visit us at motherdaughterprojects.com. And to see more videos from us, always subscribe to us here on YouTube. Just click that bell and you'll be notified when we post a new project. All right, and if you like animals, if you have an animal, even if you don't like animals, I think you'll probably like this video on one of the sides. <laughs> thanks, bye. Bye.